It's February 27th, 2020, and we're going to look at the pear tree here. Okay, this is from probably 25 feet away. This is an old tree. It's a foot in diameter, say, six inches above the ground. And every year we've been putting fire blight spray on it by Fertilome. It's an antiseptic. You do that when it's uh, in bloom. Now here's last year's schedule. We started to do this on March 8th and it started a little bit late in the year. So we it bloomed in March, April, and then again in September and October. We had two different blooming periods. So you mix this up and spray it on um, the petals. And so here it is on the 27th right here and we have the first blooms coming out so it was 4 degrees C this morning 39 F we've got some buds coming out and on these growth here this tree was trimmed a month ago when it was fairly dormant and we had a couple warm days here so it encourages it to bud out. These limbs here that pop back like this have got trigger pressure so that's a good viable limb. Now this little twiggy limb here that is kind of stiff for its size, when I say stiff that it doesn't bend like this, like this is like it's rubber. This is stiff, this is probably dead, and it probably has fire blight in it. So I need to trim this off. I'm gonna wait probably another couple days. Maybe this weekend I'll do it. That's what it looks like. This old limb that was on here had growth on it last year and then it died off so it might be this entire limb is going to have to be cut off this got injured a little over 25 years ago got hit by a backhoe and it's kind of never really done anything so if it's all disease it needs to be cut off generally you kind of sterilize the saw cuts any of the debris for fire bright you need to go ahead and remove it. This limb here is very productive. It's an old limb that actually merged together with a different branch years ago, kind of molded together. Here's an area where I grafted on a few years ago some limbs to try to replace this one that was cut off. And they grew for a couple of years and then they got diseased and uh, had to be cut off. Sometimes kind of hard to figure out what to cut off. It's very humid here so what I do is I tend to trim this so all this is open to the light. It tends to reduce the spread. All these are facing south. They're very productive limbs for pears. There's some buds. It's the first one that came out. And this is a little bit disappointing. I got some here that probably have to be cut out. That one looks definitely, can just be it's dead or it can be it's infected. So when this is cut off here, you want to go through and Better to get, not leave it on the ground, better just to collect it. Some people burn it. Because the stuff that oozes off this will tend to get redeposited back into open pores. And it's very susceptible when you have a 
open bloom like this. So that's when the spray here is generally put on. When I first got this, I didn't realize that. I kind of screwed up the year before. I was spraying it all year, but um, this stuff tends to be, uh, you put it on when it's in bloom. It's got stepromycin on it. You want to make sure you use gloves and everything. And usually I put in about a gallon or something like that, half a gallon to a gallon in a pump sprayer and it's one I just use for this I don't use it for anything else and then for this thing where I've just got a few blooms here I might just mix up a small Windex type sprayer and just do some of these this tree was actually planted I believe in 19 it was uh, probably half inch quarter inch in diameter and 1971 or 72 when it was planted and it went completely underwater in Katrina to the top of it turned completely black so it's had some rough times and I usually open up the canopy on it to make sure a lot of everything is uh, got light exposed and sometimes you got to be pretty brutal now whether they coat this or not, this is usually considered to be improper. This was actually a hollow area that was full of bugs all the time. And I went through and cut all that out. It kept on getting ants in there. So I got tired of it a couple years ago and just filled this whole thing full of roofing tar. So it was going to get thrown out anyways. Now what can happen you can actually trap water some of these places so it's not always good practice to seal that up that's kind of a controversial subject what I like to do is make cuts so that you're not going to collect water on it so it's going to shed off these will naturally close up so I tend usually not to cover these up see here's some that are completely uh, covered up. You get some areas here that it's like the bark has got always got some fungus like stuff on it or some type of lichen or something that grows. This will be reduced if you make sure you got a lot of limbs exposed to light. So probably gonna have to cut this whole limb off which I really don't want to do but you know wait to see if it has any more growth on it. But it looks pretty bad, pretty, pretty much gone. And this one last year had a, grew about three or four feet high and then it got infected and I cut it back. And then it kind of gave the ghost up. Had a lot of aphids on it. I put a bunch of sticky goo on it here to prevent the, uh, aphids from going up and I thought it was gonna keep this limb going but I think it's pretty much gone so it's gonna have to get cut off which is that's the one I used to climb up in the tree to do further trimming so that's just one of the reasons I like to keep it there you can see here there's some areas here that got cut off. This is during Katrina. It got hit and knocked a big piece and cut it off. So it's had mechanical damage. Here you've got some that's all open up. That's what happens. You get an old tree. But here you've got a lot of good turgor pressure. All these that are twiggy looking here tend to have, produce a lot of uh, fruits. And I like to cut these back so they're not too spindly because the weight of the fruits, every so many years this thing will go crazy and have so much it'll break the uh, limbs back onto here. So I like to kind of keep these short and stubby now this guy here 
is going toward the center I'm going to probably prune this thing back because it tends to fill up the center of the tree and then it doesn't get as much light this tree also happens to have a bunch of uh, pieces that tend to pop out I believe this was a grafted tree so you get some that keeps on wanting to pop up here I keep on cutting these back been trimming this tree since it was first around so it's got some some uh, history to it okay this is from probably 25 feet away cut about say anywhere between four to seven feet off the top a month ago limit the height. I do that every few years and open up the center core of it make sure light gets to all the limbs. This whole thing went up underwater in Katrina back in 2005 and turned black. And it's purposely trimmed to be real stubby so it'll go through hurricanes and the water came up to here, I want to say, six years ago in a hurricane. So this is must be fairly salt tolerant. I think the first bloom is right there. Somewhere here.